Greetings, citizens of Nerdtropolis. Sean Tauscher, the mayor of Nerdtropolis, and my guest today is Orlando Jones, who you know from Mad TV and Drumline and is now starring in Till Death Do Us Part. A wedding, that is one thing. But you said you wanted out. Nobody gets out. You just don't decide you want to have a normal life. Are you going to regret this? We got a bridezilla killer on the loose. Bang! You know, he told us not to hurt you. Oh, that's nice. The game has changed. I'll show you what made me the Golden Gloves champion of my community. Mr. Orlando Jones, it's so great to be with you today. Say, man, good to talk to you. What's happening over there? It's great, man. It's a great pleasure to talk to you. I grew up with your work from the 90s and 2000s. Like, that is my late childhood years to, like, mid-teens. And I got to say, you haven't aged a day, but I have, obviously. (laughs) (laughs) I found this fountain. I ain't supposed to tell nobody about it. Uh (laughs) But it's a great pleasure talking to you today. You have a brand new film coming up, Till Death Do Us Part. It's your latest flick coming out to theaters August 4th. And it was a lot of fun, uh, especially the groomsmen interacting with each other. That was a bunch of fun. And I just felt like this movie is like a, horrific and fun take on Mr. and Mrs. Smith. It takes it to a whole new (laughs) genre. That's a great description. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's a great movie. definitely got it's Mr. and Mrs. Smith. You enjoy it, yay! Yeah, for sure. And I think this movie is also for your co-star, Cam Ziogande to show off his like dance moves. And I really think he's trying out for dancing with the stars, this whole movie. <laughs> That's what I was teasing him about on set. I was like, what is going on with you? I was like, listen, we're going to do it. The, Timothy was like, oh, this is going to be a lot of fun. Cause I was torturing him on set. Cause I'm like, you're the guy everyone hates in the movie. So I'm going to torture you as like a second antagonist in this movie. <laughs> Because he's always dancing. He's always trying to give his speech. He's always checking himself out in the mirror. I was like, everybody wants this jackass to die, including me. (laughs) I'm actually quite the opposite. I was just mesmerized by him. And I thought he was fantastic. And, you know, I grew up in the 90s. Even better. Yeah. And I grew up in the 90s. So, like, do you remember that Batman animated series with, like, Mark Hamill as the Joker? Just his persona dancing around with the knife. It was, like, that very animated Joker. just like all full of himself is like the vibes I was getting from him. Dude, that's a great call. By the way, also the best Joker. Yeah, for sure. Indeed. So how was it to work with Cam and what did he bring to the set every day? Cam is hilarious. Um, He is, he is charismatic and he's, he, he kind of, it draws you in to all of the, the craziness that he's doing. Right. So we kind of really got along really well and we kind of started our dance on set pretty early on because he was, you know, he's always touching stuff and moving stuff. And I was like, I, okay, I really like all this because it gives me a lot to come and play with. Uh, and also he was just super funny. So we kind of bonded early on and I really liked the way he was playing his character. And so I really got into like the idea of, of how my character does not like his character at all. And the whole backstory of just what my relationship is with the other groomsmen, particularly the the bridesmaid, who I think my character actually is cool with until she kills a bunch of his friends, whereas he would much rather have killed Cam uh, much earlier on. So I just kind of like that idea that amongst these groomsmen, they have this these very different relationships and feelings about one another. And I thought it would make the movie a lot more interesting. And fortunately, the director had had a had a similar idea. And. And we shot it that way. And I think it came out man, amazingly. Yeah, the chemistry between all the groups is really fun. A lot of funny scenes between everybody, too. And mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of backstory to be explored, too. You know, I feel like despite what happens, I feel like there's a another story that could be told, kind of a, a prequel leading up to what everyone's background is. 
Well, that that's kind of what we talked about. We really were, were thinking of uh, many moons ago. Uh, there's a movie called The Thing, uh, a horror movie. Uh, and Richard Mazur is one of the actors in that movie. He's also an, an acting coach. And I did a, a piece with him, a play that Stephen Adley Gerges had written uh, called Our Lady of 121st Street. And one of the things he told me about The Thing was they built these massive character backstories for how they related to one another and how much that plays in that movie. Well, that, that's why that movie is a classic. And we we all grabbed that kernel and and built that story amongst each other. And so it's funny. We would like to tell that story of our backstories together because we think that's really would be a fun movie because there's a lot of stuff amongst us that you never see, but we play it off of each other, which is really awesome. Yeah. And I think there can even be a movie similar to like Reservoir Dogs where y'all are just sitting in a cafe and just talking about y'all's day and what y'all went through and stuff like that. Just the chemistry between everybody and what they bring is a lot of fun. I'm going to tell Timothy this. I actually really like this idea. And we've been talking about what it would look like if we did a sequel. So if people go out and love this movie, we're probably going to do exactly what you're saying. Because we, we we feel the same way. We think it would be super fun to play out that story. Yeah, have everyone sitting in a cafe with like donuts and coffee and everyone talking about their day and their missions, everything else that we're doing, you know, that past week. And I just having those flashbacks would be really fun. And you're flashing back <laughs> to it. Exactly. You know what? You, you you might need to go pick up a pen, my friend. You 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 might need to start doing a little writing of your own. Maybe I don't know. I like this more often. I th- I like uh, meeting my idols and getting inside of them and seeing what they're all up to these days. Uh, you know what? Point taken. Fair <laughs> enough. But yeah, I like your I like your idea. I like the way you storytell. You're you're good. Hats off. I appreciate it. And obviously, this movie is about a wedding. So in real life, what's the craziest and most unexpected thing that you've seen someone do at a wedding? Oh, wow. Um, I watched, I don't know if I'm supposed to even say this. Um, I watched um, a bridesmaid and one of the groomsmen uh, decided that they were going to do the nasty at the church behind the altar. I, I, I don't, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, both of them going straight to hell. But I don't know how you decide that what you want to do is trying to have. And they did it before. Like they, we were all coming in. They thought they were going to get it in somehow before, like before the wedding. <laughs> it was that we, 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 we walked in on that. It like, probably was a West Coast uh, wedding, but their clocks were on East Coast time or something. It was a West Coast wedding. <laughs> uh, this awesome. is the hilarious part. Uh, the clergyman left. The, literally, the clergyman walked off because of what was happening amongst the partying bridesmaid and groomsmen. He was like, I'm done. And they had to literally go get a pinch hitter to come in because he wouldn't he said he would, didn't want to be a part of the debauchery. No sinning allowed. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I think in a church, it, it offended him. I, I, I saw his point, but that's the wildest thing I've ever seen at a wedding. That is wild indeed. So while making this movie, was there a certain moment that sticks out to you or just a memorable day? I think when I saw Natalie jump up flat footed and wrap her uh, legs around the guy's neck and take him down and we were just doing some rehearsal, I was like, whoa. In most movies, you know, people joke uh, that, oh, I could sneeze and beat that girl up or blah, blah, blah. But she is a gifted athlete. That lady is strong. We were messing around. She hit me a couple of times. And once I finished wiping my tears off and crying, I called my mama and told her to come get this woman because I wasn't about to go to jail. Uh, but she's tough. And I think it lends so much to the movie. But the most interesting thing for me was watching her physicality in stunt scenes and just seeing how far she could leap or how she would put her foot on a wall and jump this way and like wrap around someone. It, just really top notch, man. For I've, I've I've been in a lot of big movies with a lot of big stunt people, and that lady's as good as any stunt person I've ever seen. Yeah, it was amazing to see her kick ass and just <laughs> go all yeah. out. And yeah, she's a beast. One last question for you: What advice would you give aspiring comedians and actors who are just starting on their creative journeys? Aspiring comedians, please go get on stage. It doesn't matter where; just get on stage. Get in your 10,000 hours, get on your feet. I promise you, you'll get better. Um, I, I can't tell you how many people I remember. Think of it this way. When J-Lo first started, I'm sorry, J-Lo, Jesus. When Jay Leno first started, 
he was just a guy from Ohio who sucked at comedy. And then he's found himself on the Tonight Show. I think it's so important to, to do the thing. Uh, for writers, I always say writers write. Uh, pl please write. Don't let a strike stop you. They, they said you can't sell it to these uh, studios. They didn't say you couldn't make it and create it. So for me, it's all about that. And stop thinking that if you don't sell it to someone and it's not this, that doesn't mean it has any value and it's not worth anything. And for young writers, write a book. The book has immediate value. Don't write a screenplay first. Write a book. Go sell your book. You can turn your book into a screenplay later, or you can license your book. But the IP of writing a book is more valuable than trying to write a movie or a television show. So do that first and then adapt your thing into um, uh, what is uh, content for the uh, small and big screen. But don't start off on a script when you can write a book. That's amazing advice. And you're such an inspiration to many. And I really appreciate you talking to me today. It was really great. Oh, uh, thank you, man. At any time, I hope we get to do it again. Oh, for sure. Thank you so much, Orlando. All right, thank you, brother. Once again, this is Sean Taj, the mayor of Nertropolis, and stay tuned for more movie news, reviews, interviews, and trailers.